welcome to another edition of Yacht Chris Weekly. Back in the garden this week and the weather's been very kind to us, very mild, but really nice warm days, pleasant days. You can sit outside and no need for a coat or hat or anything like that. And that's coming towards, well, where are we? Towards the end of November now. Definitely past the midpoint. And it's meant that a lot of plants have been able to leave outside without any protection. So the half hardy palms, the musabajo has not been wrapped up or even lost all its leaves yet. And the cycas revolutus is still out. But it is time to do some of those jobs that I can't put off much longer. And that includes digging up the aeoniums and taking cuttings. So I'll be doing that in today's episode. I'll be bringing in all the arid plants that are sort of tender, bring those into the, the garage. And I'll be consolidating all the potted plants, seeing what I've got and moving them to the correct place in the garden as well. And it's also a good time to have a look at the palm trees. It's at the end of the growing season, really. With all the, the summer bedding out of the way, it's really a good time to see how much growth they've put on. So I'll be looking at all the Trachycarpus palms once again, just quickly, just to see how they've got on. So, let's get gardening. time to get the aeoniums in which have grown absolutely amazingly this summer especially into autumn where it's had a lot more moisture and it's allowed the, the individual rosettes to really plump up but they can't stay out all winter because nine times out of ten they will die because it'll be too cold in very mild winters they can survive but you can't risk it so this year I'm taking cuttings of most of these rather than digging them all up. So I'm just going to go in and take a cutting like so. It's got a nice long stem, decent rosette, get the old leaves off the bottom, the ones that are drying out already. And basically I'm going to take these to the greenhouse and I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. Right, got a few hundred of these rosettes to dig up. Well, as take cuttings off, so I better get cracking. Okay, so that's a lot more aeoniums that I've taken cuttings off. It's time to get this lot into the greenhouse. So this is where the aeonia cuttings are going to go. I basically just got a grow bag. I've just cut the top off put drainage holes in the bottom and I'm just going to place all the aeonium cuttings all across here because I found last year that the cuttings I did that I just put into pots of plants they grew really really well and survived winter in very good condition so basically I'm doing the same putting loads of cuttings in one big basically tray of compost and then all my other pots in the greenhouse I'll stick in loads of aeonium cuttings in there. All the space I've got here, I'll put more aeoniums as well. So that's the next job. And so here we are, I've got several of the aeoniums that I've just placed the cuttings into the compost. And I'll continue to do so to fill up this full area. And then I'll fill up the trays below on that level and on the ground with more aeoniums I'll pull up and loads more cuttings I've just put in these pots around the onsettes and also down here in little palm pots as well just basically filling all the space I can with aeonium cuttings Right, so that's as many aeoniums as I can 
squish and squash into the to the greenhouse absolutely everywhere in all the pots of all the plants underneath the staging on the staging on the shelves now I've taken lots of cuttings of aeoniums what I've done is double my chances because if it's a really mild winter these stems of aeoniums will reshoot in spring it's obviously very unlikely but it can happen and I've got over I've overwintered aeoniums in the ground before and they've been fine in the very mildest winter so I've got the cuttings in the greenhouse but I've got the plants still in the ground which may survive until next year, fingers crossed right, there's still lots more to dig up there are loads of aeoniums still in the ground and they'll have to take their chances as they have no more room for these plants this is a rather special palm. This is a, a Butia aerospatha crossed with a Syagras Romans Ophiana Santa Catrina and it's been kept in this pot which is not big enough for it at all now. So I'm going to pot this up with my mix of John Innes and also horticultural grit and this will go spend a winter in the greenhouse just dicking along hoping it roots well into the new bigger pot so we're going from this size pot to this size pot, nice deep one for the roots and hopefully it'll fill it out next spring and summer and as you can see that's got a fabulously vigorous healthy root ball on here bursting with roots ready to get out into some new soil so I'll pop that up right now and then off to the greenhouse So here's a quick look again at the Trachycarpus family that are growing by the, the fence and south facing. You've got the always very small Trachycarpus nanus, which as you can see the weeds by the side of it, which are just a few weeks old, are almost as big as the palm tree that's been in several years. Next to that we've got the Latisectus. Still looking very healthy, but that will be protected soon from the worst of the cold weather. Regular Chachycarpus fortuni to the side of that. And then, as we go down, we will see the Gemini Sectus, which is again a very small palm, but it's put out a couple of leaves this year. It's best it's looked. We've got a Princeps palm behind that which is starting to look really really nice and then we've got the Nanital over in the distance there and then if I come around you can see the biggest growing palms remember most of these palms are roughly all the same size when planted in 2015 but look at these two you've got the one that was bought as Manipur but obviously isn't here and then you've got the Princeps hybrid which is a huge growing palm now chucks out loads of leaves, big leaves as well it's getting a decent sized trunk if we just zoom in there you can see the trunk on it is a proper meaty trunk now that's grown magnificently well. To zoom out and quickly go around the corner, we can see the next one, which is the real Takiel, and it's grown pretty well this year. Nice dark green leaves. And the next to that is a Marcianus, which showed last week is still looking really good, and that will be protected by the rubber tyres for installation very soon. And finally the waggy, which obviously is very hardy and is growing well between the fence and the greenhouse. That's a quick look again at the Trachycarpus palms and a final look here of the Princeps hybrid. Now here's a, a lot of palms that don't need the protection of a heated greenhouse at all. And these are the Trachycarpus fortunae seedlings here. 
and the crosses of Trachiapus 49, Nanus and Wagneranus and Princeps. Got a Chemerops, Serifera as well. These are all in pots, so these are fine. If the weather turns really cold, then I'll bring them in to the garage. But they're hardy plants and they'll be fine. Like this, protected a little bit by the greenhouse and the fence as well. And here in the garage, I put all my smaller agaves and aloes that are in pots in a tray here. That they won't be really watered over winter, they'll be kept very dry. So we've got the regular things, all the smaller agaves. Got a few little aeoliums as well. Got some of the, the palms and yuccas in pots that I've not planted out and they'll be fine. I mean, there's not loads of light in here, but we've got one big window there, one big window there, although these are north and east facing, there's still enough light to keep these ticking over, because they're sort of in stasis really over winter, they're not really growing, they're just sort of keeping alive. And this is where they'll stay till about March, April time. Thanks for watching this edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. Join next week where I'll be doing more jobs in the garden.